the pros and the cons of living in San Gabriel, California. Let's talk about the city. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Calvin, your San Gabriel Valley Realtor. And if you wanna know more about living in San Gabriel Valley, please click that like button, click that subscribe button for weekly content all about our beautiful area. And if you're thinking about making the move to maybe San Gabriel, San Gabriel Valley, or Southern California in general, I'm putting my information on the screen. Me and my team would love the opportunity to help you guys out. So many of you have been reaching out through YouTube. We've been absolutely loving helping you guys make that transition over here. And as you saw from the title, the pros and cons of San Gabriel, California is what we're gonna be covering today. So without further ado, let's just jump right into it with pro number one, which is the history of San Gabriel. The city of San Gabriel is an anchor of the deep history of our area. I mean, the San Gabriel and San Gabriel Valley were kind of one and the same. <laughs> and that's because of the Spanish mission that's located in the city. Built all the way back in 1771 and dubbed the San Gabriel Archangel, this was the origin of our area. So if you live in San Gabriel, this statewide landmark, one of them, and there's a plethora of them all across the California and the state, one of them is located in your backyard. And in tandem with the mission, there is the Mission Playhouse, which is a theater and a venue for a lot of events and entertainment uh, concerts as well. Pro number one is the history of San Gabriel, California. And pro number two is the supermarkets and grocery stores in San Gabriel. I mean, San Gabriel has an abundance of these. Specifically, uh, or more oftenly, is the Asian ones. I mean, we have 168 Supermarket, we have the 99 Ranch, we have San Gabriel Supermarket, Good Fortune Supermarket, and Hawaii Supermarket, which is located in the southern end of the city. A little secret for all the locals out there, if you are looking for a bottle of alcohol, Hawaii supermarket tends to have it a bit cheaper than anywhere else. There's also Super A Supermarket and also Carniceria La Lupita and Los Toros Meat Market, which although those two carnicerias are located in Rosemead, it's right on the border of San Gabriel. So we're counting that here, okay? <laughs> Anywhere you live in San Gabriel, you're no more than about seven minutes away from a grocery store, which is a huge plus if you forgot some milk or you're just running low in some OJ, a quick trip does not take long. So that's pro number two of living in San Gabriel. Pro number three is the schools in San Gabriel. So we are in the San Gabriel Unified School District. Our main high school is Gabrielino High School. And we're comparable in the top ranks with a lot of the great schools in our area. If we're looking at greatschools.org, we are ranked as eight out of 10. All elementary schools are ranked somewhere around seven and eight out of 10 as well. Moving over to US News Weekly, uh, where they rank all the high schools around the area, the Metro LA area, the California schools, and also nationwide. Gabrielino High School ranks as 940 nationally, number 131 on the California level, and number 59 in the Metro LA area. So it's safe to see why that a lot of people, especially a lot of the clients that I've worked with, specifically request Gabrielino High School and also the San Gabriel Unified School District. So those are our three pros of living in San Gabriel. Number one, our deep history with the Archangel and the mission. Number two, the abundance of grocery stores and supermarkets. And number three, the schools. Now we're gonna pivot over to the cons of why you should need to live in San Gabriel, California. Con number one when living in San Gabriel, it's kind of a funny one, it's bad drivers. Yeah, you heard that right, bad drivers in San Gabriel. If you are a resident here, uh, you can attest to this and you know exactly what I'm talking about. When driving down Valley Boulevard, you really have to drive defensive. I mean, I've seen people drive on the wrong side of the street, people making U-turns at intersections and running over the center divider. I've seen people make no stops or full stops for absolutely no reason. It's kind of crazy here and I'm not sure why. But, but what I do know is that my defensive driving style goes to an absolute 10 out of 10 when going through San Gabriel, as I mentioned before, specifically on Valley Boulevard. There's even a YouTube channel and a Facebook group dedicated to showing videos and stories about how bad the drivers are in the San Gabriel Valley. However, I think it's kind of amplified on Valley Boulevard and in San Gabriel for some reason. That's just my opinion and what I've noticed. Let me know if you know the same in the comments. 
Moving on to con number two is the cost of living in San Gabriel, which is expensive. So the barrier to entry in San Gabriel is quite high. Most of that is due to the real estate prices. Uh, look at this report here. We have, it is the market activity report. We see the estimated median home value in San Gabriel is $996,000. We're up 27.81% in the past two years, 7.67 in the past year, and 3.23% in the past three months. In the past month, we're down 1.19%. That's the breakdown for you of the monthly report. So we're looking at data from bestplaces.net. Now we're not gonna cover the entire report because I have another video I'm gonna link here called The Cost of Living in San Gabriel, California. We go in depth on this report. But we are, what we are going to look at is the overall score that it gave San Gabriel, and that's 182. What 182 means is that we are 1.82 times more expensive to live in than a random city or a standard city in America. So all factors included were almost two times more expensive to live in than the average city in the United States. And the number three and last con of living in San Gabriel is the type of home available to you as a buyer. Really in San Gabriel, you're gonna see two types of homes. A uh, single family that's built in the 1920s to around mid-century, or the new su smaller subsection of homes which are newly built homes around the 2010s. That's what we tend to see in San Gabriel. The geography of San Gabriel is relatively flat throughout the city, so you're not going to see any of the homes in the hills like Monterey Park or Sierra Madre, uh, La Cañada, you're not going to see a lot of that. And a lot of the mid-century homes are owned by first or second homeowners, which means that homes that come on the market have been owned for a long time and tend to not have a lot of work done because change of ownership usually dictates when a renovation is done. So a lot of these homes, uh, they have seen better days, definitely. So that concludes our three pros and our three cons of living in San Gabriel. I hope you enjoyed this video. I try to give you some in-depth knowledge of what the locals know around here as a local of San Gabriel. Um, as always, if you are looking to make the move here to San Gabriel, the San Gabriel Valley, or Southern California in general, um, send me a text, give me a call, give me a smoke signal if you have to. You guys make the first move. Me and my team will take care of the rest in helping you guys transition over here. We're getting a lot of people who are looking to move into the suburbs from the city. I'm um, also from Northern California and out of state. So we love helping you guys and I love showing you around our beautiful area. Uh, like I said, information's on the screen here. And as always, I will see you guys on the next one.